Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys, Derry here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Rune's Path. So, as you guys are probably pretty aware by now, we are getting very, 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 very close to spending the night in Rune's room. And I think maybe this episode will be that one. Ooh, I wonder what awaits us. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoy the video. Sit back and, and sit back and let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes. And it, that's a good one. Jump right in. <clears throat> All right. It was almost time for the stargazing to begin, so we hurried outside onto the terrace. Here we found a few other students already waiting, and several telescopes lined up at the edge of the terrace. The night sky here certainly is something. Next to the entrance stands Devon, together with a professor I am not familiar with. He's a burly badger, probably in his late 40s or 50s, looking rather friendly and approachable. Good evening, Professor. Good evening, Lake. And hello there, Jorgen. Evening, Professor. I hope you're well. I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Devin glances at his watch, then looks at the notebook he holds in his other paw. Looks like everyone is here already. We can start now. Let me introduce you to Professor Arn Fang, who will give you a crash course in astronomy and stargazing tonight. Thank you, Devin. Hello, everyone. It's nice to meet you all. So you're here because you've signed up for stargazing as your activity for today. You probably expected to start with the telescopes, which you can see over there, but that's not what we're going to do. I understand that some of you might be more advanced in the topic, but we're going to start with the very basics today. We're lucky that the wind blew the clouds away, otherwise we wouldn't be able to see much and would have to postpone the activity. Stars are favorable to us today. He chuckles at his own pun before continuing. Devin, can you go and turn the lights off? Sure thing. Stargazing for someone not versed in it might seem uninteresting. It's just looking at the sky, isn't it? Well, in a way it is, but it becomes interesting when you know what you're looking for. The sky is truly a beautiful thing in itself, but knowing what you are looking at transforms the experience. We will start our course with the simplest exercise. Look at the sky and try to locate the Earth's major constellation. That's easy, Bjorn is standing right there. Lake points at the bear and whispers to Jorgen, who upon hearing that hides his face in both his paws with a sigh. Thank you, Devin. So now you can find the Ursa Major by yourself? I meant to phrase that more as a question. <laughs> I look up at the sky, but I have no idea what to look for. I've heard about that constellation, but at first glance it's hard to recognize anything even a bit Ursine looking. If you found it, please raise your paw. Glancing around, I see a few paws already in the air. I myself have no idea what to look for, though. Okay, so now, how to find that constellation in the sky? When you look at Ursa Major and its tail, you will surely notice a familiar shape. You may know this group of stars as Carl's Vogman, Charles Wagon, or the Plow. The Plow? That's Big Dipper for you, Devin. Ah, sorry. British English sometimes still confuses me. Oh, that makes it much easier. I think everyone at least once in their life found the Plow in the sky. Only, unlike in the city, the sky here is filled with a multitude of stars. How am I supposed to find anything among so many? Counterintuitively, you may find out that locating specific stars is harder here, because of how many stars are visible. Focus on the brightest ones and ignore all the, ones, all the, ignore all the small ones. I think I see it. Looking only for the brighter stars, I finally locate the familiar shape and raise my paw. Now, why is this important at all? A constellation is the third biggest one of the night sky, and certainly one of the most well-known. It is extremely useful in navigation in the northern hemisphere of our planet. Even Homer in the Odyssey mentions Ursa Major as the constellation that never disappears from the sky, and instead bathes in the ocean's waves. If we draw a line going through them, the last two stars of the bowl point us straight to Polaris. Who can tell me why, this, why is that important? Polaris is the North Star. It's roughly above the North Pole, and so it's the point around which the whole sky rotates. That's right! Thank you, Jorgen. What you might not know is that Polaris is actually a three-star system, composed of a primary star with two smaller companions, and that's a story for a different lesson. If anyone here is interested in nice sky photography but doesn't have the money for expensive equipment, then you could take some, then you could take some nice photos knowing where Polaris is. With long exposures, you can get those beautiful star trails circling around the North Star. I like this guy already. 
It's a shame I don't have classes with him. Our physics professor is probably the grumpiest old man I've ever seen. He's really nice, but any joke about Uranus gets you thrown out of his class. <sighs> the lake knows something about that. How, Lake? I always thought you were a polite boy that never gets into trouble. I don't know where you got that idea. I can attest that it's completely untrue. So, it looks like everyone is able to locate Ursa Major. That's great! For the next exercise, let's spice things up a bit. This time you'll be using telescopes. You will take a closer look at Saturn through them. That is, if you manage to locate it. We'll make it easy for you, though, because there's supposed to be fun activities after all. You've been instructed to download a sky map app to your phones before the arrival. Hope you all did that. Oh, damn! <laughs> if not, then do that quickly before we get to the next step. Devin, you can go too. Have some fun as well. Oh, if I can, then sure thing. Okay, so we don't quite have enough telescopes for all of you, so for the purpose of this exercise, you may form pairs or triples or whatever configurations you might fancy. I don't mind. So now, please, step up to the telescopes. I believe you can sort it into bigger groups when needed yourself. Doing as Professor Arn said, I walk up to a free telescope at the end of the terrace. Looking around, I see that all my friends are already either at their telescopes or paired up with someone else. Even Miko is walking towards one alongside Bjorn. Okay, does everyone in every group have their own telescope? Good, so now we can start. Whew. Named after the Roman god of time, Saturn is a good object for observation for beginners. It's relatively easy to locate, and I might say fairly spectacular because of its rings. From my own observations, I can tell you that my students prefer to look at planets and stars. We have a bit of a closer relation with them, after all. I can't help but start to imagine what it might look like from even closer. Who knows, maybe one of you will find some alien structures on one of the planets someday. But for now, look for an object with a golden color, shining steadily, just a tad bigger than the other ones around it. First, you will need to locate it with your own eyes before finding it through a telescope. The mobile, app, the mobile map you have on your phones will be very helpful. An object with a golden color, shining steadily, just a tad bigger than the other ones around it. He's a say, hard to find. I start up the sky map. I start up the sky map. I keep wanting to say sky map app or sky app. I start up the sky app. Mm! I start up the sky map, holding, hoping that will help. I have absolutely no idea how to use it. Maybe I should have read a manual or something before the lesson. I look around in desperation. Maybe I'd be better off joining someone else after all. Also, it's already the end of the day, and I still haven't asked anyone about sharing the room for tonight. I think it's finally the time to make that decision, and this might be the best moment for that. So who am I gonna ask? You know we're going with Rune. After a moment of hesitation, I leave my telescope and look around, searching for Rune. Finally, I spot him on the other side of the terrace. He's standing alone next to his telescope, looking at his phone, probably trying to use the sky map as well. I walk towards him, careful not to bump into any of the groups. He must have sensed me approaching, but as he looks up from his phone and turns in my direction. He smiles slightly, greeting me with a raised paw. Hey, Carvin. Is everything okay? Yeah. Well, almost. I didn't really bother familiarizing myself with the app before the lesson. I thought it would be easier to use. I don't really know where to start. You're lucky then. You're unlucky then, because it's also the first time I've used it. But oh, Fred, this doesn't look too complicated. Look, if I point it at the sky, it shows exactly what exactly that portion of it on the screen. Rune lifts the phone up and looks through it at the night sky. The image on the phone follows his moves, displaying this part of the sky behind it. I guess I must use my location data. Current date and hour and built-in compass. It's pretty neat. There's a search symbol here. Let's try that. Oh, there's a category for solar system. This looks really simple, actually. Rune slowly turns around, holding his phone in front of himself, before he stops suddenly with his phone pointing somewhere behind me. Aha! And here's our Saturn. That was easy. Okay, now your turn. Just open that menu on the right, click on Search, and choose Solar System and then Saturn, and the app will point you to it with an arrow. Huh, that does sound simple. I guess I should have tried figuring it out myself first. But then, I, but then, but then, when would I ask Rune about the room? I take out my phone, unlock it, and launch the sky map again. 
takes a while before it loads. My phone isn't exactly a current model, though it's not old either. There isn't even much menu diving. Looking for solar, looking for solar system planets indeed turns out to be very straightforward. I choose Saturn, and the map displays an arrow pointing me in its direction. I lift my phone and rotate it until Saturn finally appears on the screen. Looking away from the phone, I can see the same pale dot shining in the night sky. Captivating, isn't it? I had no idea a night sky could look like this. I didn't really look at it much lately, but usually in the city, you can't see much other than the moon. It takes me back to my childhood, actually. In autumn, when the days get shorter and shorter, I often would stay out late just to lie on a hill and watch the starry sky. Back in Phil and you were living in a small town, right? Yeah, and there was a little light pop well, there was a little light pollution there. What about you? Where were you living before you went into university? I grew up in Anzalo. I'm a city boy, unfortunately. Unfortunately? Count yourself lucky. As you get older, you discover that there's not much to do in a town like this, especially during winters. Lots of youth pick up playing instruments as their hobby, just to have something to do. For example, Miko, he was working in a music store in a nearby town to earn money for his gear, and then played around with it for entire days. Hmm, maybe you're right. Both growing up in a city and in a small town has its good and bad sides for sure. But I still imagine there must be the sense of freedom when living in a small town surrounded by nature. I bet you spent your childhood playing in forests, running around your friends' houses, doing whatever you felt like. All this evening spent lazily walking around the lakes, going on trips around, going on trips around after school with my classmates. Yeah, there were some good times. Although my parents were always rather restrictive and kept me inside the house most of the time. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That couldn't have been much fun. I know how it is to spend your childhood at home. So, now that we know where Saturn is, do you want to take a closer look at it? We can continue later now that we have an occasion to see something extraordinary. Right, so how do I do this? I never used a telescope before, but this can't be too hard. Let's see. This looks like a regular tripod. I'll loosen the lock knobs and point it roughly in the right direction. The smaller scope must be a finder to help point the telescope exactly where we want. He moves the telescope while looking through the finder, and makes fine adjustments with some knobs before finally looking into the telescope. I got it! Oh wow, this is so cool! The image isn't very sharp, but I can see the planet and its rings. Here, take a look. It's so pretty. I lean in and look into the telescope. In the middle of the image, there's a rust-colored orb with a ring around it. I was expecting it to look like a flat image, but it's a very, but it's very real and three, and three dimensional. The planet casts a shadow on one side of the rings, and there's a thin shadow of the ring on the planet itself too. It's not too big, but I see it very clearly. Impressive, isn't it? Much more than I'd imagined. How you two doing? You need any help? No, thank you, Professor. We're doing fine. Glad to hear that. If you have any problems, I'm here to help. Actually, we already found Saturn through the telescope, Professor. Oh, that's great! That's all I had planned for this lesson, so you're free to play around with the telescope now if you want. Rune glances at his watch, scratching his neck with the other paw. Okay, so we're pretty much done here. There's still some time before supper, so we can stay here for a while. Actually, there's something I wanted to ask you. Yes? I gulp loudly. Okay, better to get it over with. I... Don't yet have a room to sleep in tonight. Would you be okay with sharing a room with me? Hmm. You haven't found anything yet? Rune stares somewhere in the distance, furrowing his brows. He stays like that for a few seconds before looking back at me. You know that I only have one bed in my room. I, I know, but I don't, I don't really mind. I've had my fair share of sleepovers in my life. I enjoyed spending time with you today, so I thought I'd ask you. Or are you trying to get into my bed? <laughs> Quite literally. Rune chuckles, and I can feel my cheeks getting hot. Rune seems to pro see, Rune seems to possess a, a concerning ability to leave me speechless. Now, now, I'm just joking again, Garvin. You know what? Why not? This is actually pretty exciting. Maybe you had your share of sleepovers, but I rarely had guests. So, sure. Whew! That was more stressful than I thought it would be. But now all the tension I felt dissipates and I exhale with relief. My breath turns into a white cloud between us and the cold air. 
I didn't think that would actually work. Thank you, Rune. No problem. Want to look for more planets while we still have some time? Okay, it looks like our time here is up. Thank you all for attending the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even gained a new passion. Supper is already waiting for you in the cafeteria. You're free to take it with you and eat whatever you like. Have a good night, everyone. Rune, I need to stay here a little longer. I'll catch you later in the cafeteria. Sure, I'll be there with Carvin. Looks like we're done here. That was pretty fun, wasn't it? We walk, we walk back towards the guest house, joining the small crowd of students heading to the cafeteria. I wasn't really interested in stargazing before, but that was a nice experience. Too bad we don't have such a nice night sky though back. Too bad we don't have such a nice night sky back home. Home. Gradually, I started to consider the campus I live at to be my home, but other than the house I grew up in, I think that with the telescope you still should be able to see a lot. A sky map is really a useful thing. Without it, I wouldn't even know what I was looking at. We're among the first ones to enter the cafeteria. On one of the tables, individual paper plates with food are stacked on top of each other. Looks like each of us got a sandwich and a slice of some cake. Small bottles of still water are standing in rows next to the plates. Want to eat here? Yeah, why not? We each grab one plate and a bottle of water and sit at one of the empty tables in the corner of the room, opposite of each other. There's no lamp above that table, which I'm happy with, as my eyes got used to the low light when we were stargazing. I still find it weird that you eat breakfast food at night. Wait. What do you eat at night, then? Nothing, really? I mean, we eat dinner and then maybe a light snack later if we're hungry. Huh. I had no idea. Who wouldn't want to finish their day with some nice sandwiches or a bowl of cereal? Cereal before bed? That's crazy! Yeah, I actually agree. There's some madmen who do that, though. Thanks, Thor. Are you implying that Devin does that, Rune? Rune, are you implying that Devin eats cereal before bed? <laughs> Thankfully, we got something more substantial here today. I brought some meal replacement drinks with me in case the food would be subpar, but it looks like the university found a really great guest house this year. Oh, not you too. What's up with everyone buying these lately? It's just convenient. I don't use them at home. I just, I just keep a pack in the cupboard for trips. Who else uses them though? Miko, but he has them almost every day. Ah, him. Frankly, I would never have guessed. I'd be wary of having them often. It's not really whole food. What about phytonutrients and antioxidants? Anyway, I hope we do. I hope we do get to come back here next year too. I quite like it here. I look down at the plate in front of me, taking a closer look at the food. Two rye bread sandwiches topped with slices of some dark cheese and sprinkled with pepper. Simple, but looks so good. Especially considering I'm, al I'm already pretty hungry. The slice of apple cake is deliciously browned on the edges and smells faintly of cardamom and cinnamon. Then I notice the shadow of Rune's antlers between me and him on the table and look up at him. He's leaning against the table and looking at me with his green eyes. I still can't believe he actually agreed to, li to let me sleep in his room tonight. I asked just because later I would regret not asking, but I was sure he would decline. Rune, when you think of home, do you see the place you live in or th the house you grew up in? Huh? That's a serious question. Why do you ask? I don't know. I just noticed that I'm starting to think of the campus as my home, and it was a bit of a surprise for me. I never really thought about it. But now that you mention it, I think that my home is where I have my belongings. My laptop, my guitars, my pans and knives, everything I use. So if I arrived here with the most of those, I took a part of my home with me. I don't get attached to places that much. I don't feel anything when I visit my old neighborhood. No nostalgia, no regret, no longing, nothing like that. Maybe it's just too easy. Maybe it's too, just too early for that. How long ago did you move away from your home? Four years. That's enough time to make me feel distanced from that place. I like how he said, that place. When I visit my parents, I feel more like a guest than a person living there. About you, though. You only left this year, right? Yeah, but I haven't visited my parents since then. We write messages to each other from time to time, but surprisingly, I don't miss them yet. Rune nods, his paws entwined in front of him on the table, listening to the other slight smile on his lips. By the way, we're waiting for Devin, yeah? Oh, you can start eating if you want, he won't mind. I just focused on the conversation. Yep, 
speak of him, speak of the panther. Phew! Finally done. Ah, speak of the devil. What were you doing? I had to move all the telescopes back to the guest house. We couldn't just leave them on the terrace, could we? You should have told me. Would have stayed behind and helped you. You think moving a few telescopes is too much for me? Ugh. Of course not, but if I'd helped you, you would have finished quicker. It's fine. It didn't take me long, anyway. Devin sits down next to Rune, putting his paper plate on the table in front of him. He and Rune start eating, so I grab a sandwich, too, and, took a, and take a bite. Ah, we were... Ah, oh man, we were getting closer. Oh, uh, guys, I think the next episode really might be the episode where we see what happens in Rune's room. Ooh, I cannot wait. Oh, it's gonna be good. Ah, uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!